Hey everyone, welcome back to Trailbreaker. If you have one of these on your mountain bike, you may not be getting all you can out of it. Either you just slap some air into it until it was squishy, or you started messing with pressure and knobs and made it worse. Stick around, I'll show you how to get the most out of your mountain bike shock. If you've never ever checked it, or you're afraid to make any changes, it's okay. You're among friends. Let's fix it. First thing you want to do is check the condition of your shock. If it's a brand new bike, it should be fine. But if you bought it used, it's a good idea to go ahead and take it apart and take a look at all the seals and O-rings and make sure that they're greased. I did a video on this and I'll link it right here. Fox makes it pretty easy. Just go to ridefox.com and enter this four digit code into the box and it'll take you right to the page that has all of the basic settings to get the shock in the ballpark. The number one thing you want to set first is sag. Sag is simply the amount that the suspension droops when you're on the bike in your normal riding gear. Normally you want to set it to about 30%. So the two numbers you're going to get from the RideFox uh, site is going to be the stroke, which is the amount of distance that the shock can actually travel in uh, full travel, and you can also get the uh, amount of sag, which will equate to 30% uh, once you're on the bike. So it doesn't really matter if you're doing it in the attack position or if you do it seated, just make sure you do it the same every single time. And make sure you have all the gear on you would normally ride with, including your helmet and any hydration. Now before you set this, make sure you have the lockout switch open, which is going to be all the way counterclockwise. Balance on the bike and move enough to break the stiction of the shock. Reset the travel indicator O-ring and carefully dismount the bike. Then, measure the sag. Readjust the pressure to try to get about 30%. Once you do, the air pressure is your reference, not the sag. On your next ride, if it feels too harsh or too soft, then just add or subtract 5 or 10 PSI and try it again. Next, you want to set the rebound, which is this red dial right here. And what rebound does is it adjusts how quickly the shock springs back once it's been compressed. So generally, you want to go to the website and you want to set this to whatever the number of clicks from full closed is specified. So you want to dial it all the way clockwise until it stops and then give it the number of clicks counterclockwise until you get the number they recommend. To check your rebound damping, just roll off of a curb. Here it's overly damped and just sticks. Here it's too fast and cycles like a pogo stick. Here it's just right. Ideally, you want it to compress, rebound, and then settle predictably. All right, so we've got the sag set and we've got a rebound set so that it is absolutely perfect. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take it to the next level and do something that very few people actually check, and that is your air volume. And what that means is we're going to check to see, based on the proper sag, how easily are we blowing through all of our available travel. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and either do a big hit or a big drop or just do like I'm doing, set up in a parking lot, reset your O-ring all the way up, and then give it a couple big bounces. And what you're trying to do is put as much force through the pedals as you can. And then check your O-ring. If you're using about 80 to 90% of your travel, that's probably pretty good. However, if you've blown through all your travel that easily, it's time to make a change. Now, you could add some air pressure, which would sort of fix the bottoming out problem, but it's gonna give you a really, really harsh ride and it's not gonna be fun the other 95% of the time. The best solution is to add volume reducers, which do just that. It reduces the amount of air volume inside the air chamber. So as the shock starts to get toward the end of its travel, the resistance increases and it becomes, you've heard the term progressive. So it makes the shock so that the further it gets into its travel, the more resistance it takes to get it to full compression. So it allows you to still maintain a good, comfortable 30% sag, 
which gives you good traction on braking and cornering, but it also gives you better resistance to bottoming out on those really, really big hits. So all we gotta do is open the shock up and add some volume reducers. And the good thing is we don't have to remove it from the, from the bike. All we gotta do is remove the air pressure slowly and cycle it a couple times as you're letting it out so you don't get air trapped on the negative side of the air shaft. And then just unscrew the air can and in the cap, you'll find that there may be nothing in there or there might be a single small volume reducer. It's kind of trial and error, so you, you know, add a little bit more than what's there, close it up, pressurize it again, and you start back from zero. So start resetting your sag. It might take a different air pressure this time. Recheck your rebound, and then recheck your volume by bouncing it again. And keep adjusting it until you can have 30% sag, good rebound, and good air volume. So always do it in that order. Anytime you change uh, one thing, go back and check the rest of them. But primarily you're gonna set sag, rebound, air volume, and repeat. After you do this, you're gonna find out your bike rides so much better, you're gonna wish you did it sooner. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comment section down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you're like me and just refuse to act your age, go ahead and subscribe. Thanks for watching.